Hello and welcome to this short introduction to the Digital Bird 3D printable camera motion control system. If you're watching this video, you're probably in the same position I was in about a year ago. I was looking for a camera slider which ticked all the boxes, but one which I could afford. Unfortunately, it doesn't exist, or it didn't exist. Um, they, uh, there were plenty of sliders out there which ticked all the boxes, but they were hugely expensive, or at least way beyond my budget as an amateur filmmaker. So being a designer, I checked out Thingverse, and sure enough, there were lots of great sliders I could have built there. Um, but none of them matched what I was seeing available commercially, and none of them were complete systems. They may be a slider, they may have a pan tilt head, they may vaguely work together, but they didn't do everything. So in my madness, I decided to undertake the project myself and come up with a system which more closely matched what was available commercially. The system as we see it now uh, consists of three parts. We have the pan tilt head here, the slider, and the cinematic turntable, all of which connect and work wirelessly, no cables at all. The only cable required is the shutter cable, which can run from camera here to the port on the side of the um, pan tilt head. Or if we don't have a pan tilt head on board, we can run that shutter cable to the same port on the slider to get the same effect. So let's start with the slider. So this is the Digital Bird Dual Action Slider. It's built around a robust 2040 V-slot aluminium rail. It uses four mini gantry plates with no less than 16 Dalrin wheels to firmly grip the rail while providing a smooth action. The length of the rail allows for 350mm of travel in desktop mode, which doubles to 700mm when mounted on a tripod. One great advantage of the monorail system is that the belts can be held close to the rail and not hanging in open space where they can be damaged. The slider, along with all the other parts of the system, use the Sony NP-style batteries commonly used on lots of different types of photographic equipment. Notice there are two battery ports which are hot swappable, only one actually being required to power the slider. At the control end, there's also a power port available for a 7.5 volt external power supply. Control wise, I've deliberately avoided using mobile phone apps to control any parts of the digital bird system. I personally believe there's too much reliance generally on mobile phone apps, which immediately become problematic when you need more than one running at the same time. In place of this, we're using a Nexteon TFT touch display, which controls all parts of the system. The system's powered on using the small rocker switch on the side of the control panel. We should see the display light up and the slider begin its homing setup. So let's take a look at the display. We can see along the top we have our time presets and hours, minutes and seconds. Below this we have our configurable setup options, namely ease or ramp to control acceleration and deceleration rates. Next to this is bounce which tells the slider to bounce back and forward between key points, for example, when using it for interviews. And then time lapse, which allows us to set the number of frames required in increments of 50. Bottom left, we have two buttons, one on top of the other, for our in point or start position. And below that, our out point or end position. To the right of the large red button, we see two arrow keys which allow us to change the value for any of the other button options. When no other item on the menu is selected, these arrow keys also double to allow you to drive the slider's carriage up and down the rail. And last but not least is a large red button in the middle, which is our play button. Currently, everything's nice and simple with only one level of menus, although this is likely to change to at least two in the future as I add new features and functions to the system. So let's set up some simple moves. If we assume our start position is where the camera is right now, to set our new out point, first press the out point button once only. The button will highlight and the stepper will release the camera carriage, allowing you to simply move the camera to your desired end point. To lock in this position, 
press the out point button again and the slider will record your out point and automatically return the camera to the start point ready to play or move. Setting up the in or start position is exactly the same process. However, since the slider is already at the start, you won't see it home to the beginning since it's already there. Next, we can decide how long we want our move to take using the hours, minutes and seconds boxes at the top of the menu. The default for this is 10 seconds. Of course, the slider also provides for time lapse, which is selected in 25 frame increments. When in time lapse mode, the seconds button above it is used to set the amount of time you want the shutter to stay open. For example, if you have the camera in bulb mode. The shutter is automatically triggered using the 2.5mm jack on the top of the slider with the appropriate cable for your camera. It's worth noting that any move on the slider will trigger through the same cable the camera to start recording, though this often depends on the mode that the camera is set up in. Sony cameras, for example, will only do this if they're set up in movie mode. Just to go over some of the other features on the slider, we can see that on the camera carriage it's equipped with a quarter inch screw to which you can attach a 3.8 adapter for versatility. And next to this is a small spirit bubble to help with levelling. The small yellow button on the side of the camera carriage effectively locks the two carriages together allowing us to move the slider to a new position. Underneath we have four magnetically restrained fast deploy flip out feet for added stability and another quarter mount point positions so you can use a small tripod head equipped with a ball mount to angle the slider for elevated moves. On the bottom of the lower carriage we have a standard 120mm Swiss plate which allows us to quickly mount the slider to a suitably sturdy tripod, effectively doubling the slider's reach. OK then, so moving on to the pan tilt head, this was definitely the most challenging part of the system. I wanted a compact system that was no larger than a camera. It needed to be fast to set up. And particularly, I didn't want to spend a lot of time balancing the system. So taking a look at how the head is mounted, you'll notice there are two small buttons on the face of the head. The lower button lowers the head down onto the tripod or slider, and the upper button dismounts it in the opposite direction. No need to play around with menus to do this. The head is capable of 360 degrees of motion in the pan axis, and 180 degrees on the tilt axis. The camera is simply mounted to the tilt arm using a small Swiss plate, like so. And on the side of the head, just under the tilt arm, we have another 2.5mm shutter release jack which means when using the pan tilt head there are no trailing cables anywhere on the system. In terms of payloads, it's equipped with a NEMA 17 running a 1 in 30 precision gearbox, which allows us to lift approximately 2 kilograms worth of camera over the full 180 degrees of tilt. For those wishing to move much heavier systems, I advise you limit the amount of tilt to a point where the motor doesn't struggle or drop steps to lift the camera. But two kilograms is actually quite a lot. This setup you see here, for example, is a Sony a7 III with the 24-105 G Master, and it comes in at one and a half kilograms. So it's, you know, two kilograms should probably handle most people's requirements. Facing us on the control panel, we have a small joystick and below that three small buttons for setting the out or end points. Uh, the middle button is the play button and the lower button is for setting the in or start point. When any part of the system is powered up, it automatically connects to all the other parts. So there's no need for any messy pairing or any of that nonsense. 
So to step through how we go about setting up a simple move through the pan tilt head, first of all, on the control panel, if we press the out point button, that's the top button on the control panel, this will automatically tell the slider to do the same and we can simply slide the camera along to our required position. Then using the joystick, we can adjust the camera's target point. And to complete the process, press the out button once more. The system will then return everything to the start position. And all we need to do is press the middle or play button on the pan tilt head to see the move executed. Other functions such as time setup, ease, bounce and time lapse are still controlled through the Nexion display on the slider. I'm currently working on a remote display which will allow you to control all the features of any part of the system without having to have the slider with you. Um, check the website for updates on this and the addition of a focus motor as well which is coming soon. Last but not least, we have the cinematic turntable, which is being designed with product videos in mind. The top of the turntable has a 300mm diameter plinth, which is built in place, but obviously you can place a glass plate or any larger plinth on top of that if required. Weight-wise, it's capable of moving quite substantial weights. This old cine projector, for example, is 6 kilograms. And although I haven't tested it, I would reckon that you'd be safe probably up to around 10 kilograms. As with the pan tilt head, most of the functionality of the turntable is controlled through the next day on display. It has the same three buttons on the side, one top one being for out point, middle button being for play, and the bottom button being for setting the in point. Just like the slider, the turntable has a magnetic encoder placed under the motor, which just allows us to manually move the rotation of the turntable to the correct position before locking in the in point or the out point. Setting up those positions is exactly the same as on the slider or the uh, pan tilt head. Uh, so I won't bother going over that again. However, pressing play on any of the devices will start the system, which will then perform its move all in unison. Well, I hope this short video introduction has been of some interest to you. All the designs are free to download from the Thingverse website and the software can be downloaded from the GitHub repository. The component kits are available from myself directly on the Digital Bird website, and I'll place links in the description below to all of those. Like and subscribe for some new updates, some great new designs, and hopefully some wonderful new videos and video tutorials using the Digital Bird motion control system. Till next time.